you need to learn how to be a master presenter. The reason why, guys, is that anybody, just look at anybody in the, in the top money in the entire industry, they either know how to present or they have people that are underneath them inside of the business that know how to present. <laughs> right? So you have to know how to present or be able to teach somebody else how to do it. Because presentations the anime is the most valuable skill in the business. So we got a handout that's getting passed out right now. Without any further ado, please just stand to your feet. Go absolutely crazy because the gentleman we're bringing up, has he's the reason why we're all here tonight. He started this company, pioneered this, to make, give us the comp plan that we have. He designed the comp plan. He's the reason we're here. He's killing it right now, making more money than almost anybody else inside the network marketing industry. Mr. Timothy Hurd. Um, you know why I think everybody looks so darn good down here? You guys, because you guys get a chance to be around Joe. <laughs> Joe, man, I just get around this guy and I feel like I look good, you know? <laughs> so we're, we're ready to go tonight. Um, I think we're going to have a lot of fun. I, I really do. I, I believe that um, this will probably be one of the most valuable trainings you'll get in your life. Uh, one, of the, one of the things I want to start off with um, tonight is that, you know, the biggest, one of the biggest fears that people have um, the number one biggest fear that people have is, uh, is is actually public speaking. Number two is actually being burnt alive. <laughs> so literally right now, some of you are like, oh my God, this is crazy. You know what I'm saying? Learning how to do this. But understand that everything you do all the time in our business, every time you're talking to somebody, that's a presentation. You're always presenting. It's not whether, you know, just certain times where you're presenting to people, okay? You're always presenting. So today, uh, really what I would encourage you to do is to open up your mind, okay? Open up your mind to new possibilities. Don't right now think of you, who you are right now. You gotta visualize yourself becoming the person that you know that you could be. Because the reality is, and the fact of the matter is this. 100 years from now, okay, you know, what do you want to be remembered for? 200 years from now, what do you want to be remembered for? And understanding that in order to be able to influence people the way that you need to, uh, be able to do that, you've gotta work on your communication skills. So tonight, it's gonna be all about communication skills. It's gonna be all about developing you and helping you become a better you. And that's what my commitment is tonight, uh, is to give you everything that I got. I'm going to give you everything that I got, and I'm, I've got to condense it into a very short time frame. So I've got to ask you to really put on your mental track shoes tonight and really absorb this information. Really challenge yourself tonight to capture the business. I'm fired up about this right now. This is going to be the most important thing you're going to learn in, 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 in this business tonight. So you guys are, if you're ready to, to, to learn right now, say ah. Hi. We're ready, okay? So here it is. The nine most important proven keys to become an effective presenter, okay? This is important. Remember that no one's a natural, okay? Getting started in the business, a lot of times people think, oh, you know what, in order for me to be successful, I've got to become, guess what, a natural presenter. If you would have met me when I first got involved in this industry, when I worked at Boomers, you would not say, man, this guy's going to be good. I have my tank top on, I had it tucked into my, 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 my jogging pants, right? I have my long hair down on my shoulders. Okay, I didn't have it in a ponytail that night, you know? But I'm sitting in there, right? And I'm playing with my hair. I'm sitting here looking at this, you know, and, 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 and I was a complete idiot. But guess what I realized? That these people knew how to make money. So if I could find out what they're doing and do it, I could make a lot of what? Money. money. So I got started right away. So realize that no one's a natural. You're not going to naturally get good at this business, it's going to take time. But in order for you to develop presenters, you've got to first become one. He or she that has the most presenters makes the most money. So I need you know right now, it's not how good you are, it's how many presenters do you have. How many presenters do you have in your organization? The more presenters you have, the more money that you're going to what? Make. 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 He or she with the most presenters makes the most what? Money. How many are out there presenting information? That's what you want to realize. How many presenters do you have? He or she with the most makes the most what? Money. Money. You guys got it. Okay, so no one's a natural. You guys got that. Next thing is this, accelerate your learning. Accelerate your learning. What that means is this, accelerate your learning. Always have a voice recorder, journal, video camera, whatever, why? Because you want to capture this information. You want to capture information and then that's what you want to do. You want to listen to it again and again and again and again. Why do you want to continue to listen to it? You want to learn it, man. You know how I became a presenter? The guy that I looked up to the most in that company, that I first, my first company in 1996 that I got involved in, I looked up to this guy, I'm like, this guy is the best presenter. He would move people, man. I mean, you would go to his presentations and he would, like, move your spirit. I mean, you would just rattle your soul. And it, it, he would just inspire people, man. So guess what I did? 
I recorded it. And then guess what I did? I took his presentation and I wrote it down. I wrote the entire thing down. So what was it? You guys know like a, what do they call it? A court reporter? What do they call them? Transcribers? Basically what I did is I transcribed his presentation. And guess what I noticed? I noticed that he asked about 300 questions throughout his presentation. So guess what I started doing? Asking questions. Why do you think I did that? Because this guy is doing it. Do you guys see that? This guy's the best person I've ever met in my life. This guy's asking questions. So guess what I started doing? Asking questions. So guess what you want to start doing? You want to start learning. Accelerate your learning. Learn at a rapid rate. Learn at a rapid rate. Okay, that's what we're going to do. So here's the next thing is this. Okay, here's one of the most important things you can do is turn your car into a mobile classroom. Tonight, on the drive down here from Orange County, guess what I was listening to? Personal development. Personal development. Leaders that I look up to. People that, I, that I'm, inspi I'm inspired by. John C. Maxwell, Robert Kiyosaki, Brian Tracy, Les Brown, Jim Rohn, Zig Ziglar. Those are some of the best, in my opinion. Okay, so guess what? Turn your car into a mobile what? Classroom. Classroom, okay? Listen to personal development. You want to grow your mind. Some of you know when you get started, what CD do you get? Jim Rohn. Jim Rohn, man. You want to plug that in. I can, I can sit down with you and we can listen to that together. We can pause and I can keep going. Why do you think I did that? Because I memorized it, man. When I first got involved in this business, I used to memorize Tupac songs. <laughs> do you guys see that? Right? I like Tupac, so I'm listening to Tupac. But guess what? It didn't make me any money. Mm. Memorizing Tupac songs. <laughs> so guess what I did? I stopped listening to Tupac and I started listening to Jim Rohn. Mm. Why? Because money's a cool deal. Yeah. Do you see that? <laughs> <laughs> so guess what you want to do? Turn your car into a mobile classroom, man. Learn and grow. You will never, ever, 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 ever catch me in a car. In, if, 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 if I'm not driving, I'm going to break open and put some CDs in there. Because I, 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 I cannot stand not growing. Because if you're going to take 40 years of work and squeeze it into four years, do you think that you need to, you need to grow yourself? Yes. Constant stage of never-ending improvement. Okay, so let's get rich. Here's what you want to realize. Five M's, right? Five M's. More meetings means more what? More money. More meetings means more money. What does that mean? That means, guess what? The more times you come to meetings, the more money you're going to make. Why? Because you're around the information. You're around the information. You want to grow your mind. You want to grow yourself. How do you grow yourself? How you grow yourself is you come to the events. Plug in. Learn. Plug in and pay attention. Accelerate your learning. Get a journal and write down notes like a, a, a serious, like serious journal, uh, journal entries. Okay. Guard your mind against negative self-talk. This is important. This is important. Someone's like, man, you know what? My 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 my, my mom is negative, or my, my my sister is negative about this business, or or, or my brother is negative about this business. Guess what? Don't worry about them, worry about you. Yeah. You guys get that? Guard your mind against negative people. Someone tries to, someone tries to urinate your, 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 your head, don't let them. <laughs> you guys get that? <laughs> don't let people urinate in your head. You see how smart that is? <laughs> you do not want to, I'm texting right now because guess what happens? Let me share with you something. 95% of people out there, okay, do not know how to develop leaders. Do you guys get that? So the majority of people, the reason why most people don't know how to develop leaders is because they're insecure. Mm. Are you getting this? Yes. Yes. You get insecure leaders out there and they don't want people to rise up around them. So what they do is naturally smash people down. Mm -hmm. Because they're insecure. And whenever they get around people that are better than them, they, get, they, they feel worse. So guess what? In our business, understand something. Your success is going to be determined by your ability to be able to have leaders. Okay? So you've got to develop leaders. So understand that you've got to make sure that you guard your mind against negative people. Someone starts urinating in your head and you let them do that, just appreciate them. Why? Because guess what? That just means that they don't want to develop leaders. Because if you see the if you look at someone and see the worst in them, guess what happens? You make them worse. But if you look at someone and you see them for what they could be, they'll become what they should be. So when you look at people, what do you see them as? When you know your team, you look at it and, and you see what you don't like and you see what you like. Because everything you see is gonna expand. I, if, I, if I can hang out with you for five minutes, I can tell you right now if you're going to make it around this business. If, you know, let me tell you something. You might not be there yet. You can still get there. Yeah. Okay, meaning, and guess what? If you don't know how to develop leaders and all you know how to do is be a fault finder instead of a good finder, guess what? You can still make it. You just got to change. You're never going to make it happen being a fault finder. Looking at people's weaknesses. You got to focus on strengths. You got to focus on making people better. How do you make people better? By focusing on what you like, not what you don't like. So guard your mind against your, your negative, negative thinking, whether of someone else's mind or your own mind. 
Do you see that? Yeah. Man, you got to eliminate negative self-talk. You've got to be your number one biggest cheerleader. Mm. You've got to be your number one biggest cheerleader. You've got to be your number one biggest fan. You have to be like, man, I'm fired up, man. I am so excited about today. I'm great. When you look in the mirror, man, are you criticizing yourself or are you talking about how much you like yourself? Most of you look in the mirror and all you do is you criticize yourself. Stop doing that. You're God's greatest miracle, man. There's been five million people to walk this planet. Five billion people to walk this planet. Over five billion people have walked on planet Earth and there's only one you. You're a champion. Some of you don't believe you're a champion. You beat 40 million sperm just to be alive. <laughs> Give yourself a round of applause for that. A lot, a lot of you haven't given yourself credit for that for a while. Man, you beat 40 million people out. Because it's not, this, that's harder than the Olympics. Just so you know, right? You know, these people are like, you know, I got a gold medal. You know, like, yeah, there's five people racing, buddy. <laughs> I, I want to race there was 40 million people in here. Do you guys see what I'm saying? It's a no-brainer right there. Give yourself credit for that. Only get, uh, here, here's it. Only get positive feedback. Avoid negative criticism. When you're developing leaders, man, I'm going to tell you something right now. If you and I, if I was working with you and I was developing you into a presenter, here's what I would do. First thing I'm going to do. Okay, I'm gonna take a, I'm gonna sit down with you and I'm gonna watch you do a presentation. Not the first thing I'm gonna do with you. I'm first I'm gonna I'm gonna first I'm gonna learn how to present. Okay, I already know how to do that. So next thing I'm gonna do is guess what? Show you that I know how to present by watching you let you watch me do it. Third thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna watch you do it. And when I watch you do it, guess what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna write down the T. Okay, and on that T, guess what I'm gonna put? What I like and what I don't like. And all I'm gonna do is tell you what I like, not what I don't like. That's the deal. Why? Because I've got to get you to fall in love with presenting. Mm -hmm. The only way you're going to fall in love with something at the beginning is, guess what? Having someone encouraging you along the way. Mm -hmm. Now once you start making big money, guess what? Now preserve the right to criticize you. Mm -hmm. Do you see that? <laughs> right? You know what I mean? It's like, okay, cool, you're making 20 grand a week? All right, perfect. Here, pop, right? But until you're making money, then you didn't say, until you're making money, you're too fragile. Once I get you up to 20 grand a month, then I, then I can do it. But I'm not going to do it until you're making 20 grand a, uh, you know what I'm saying, at least a month. 20 grand a week, then you can get some criticism. <laughs> I've got to get your, I've got to give you some right out skin. You can take it when you're making 20 grand. Why? Because you're not sensitive. You ever, how many of you know, look, when I was broke, I was sensitive. Do you guys get that? Yeah. Some of you are like, you get all sensitive about stuff. It's because you don't have a lot of money. <laughs> Do you guys understand that? Yeah. When, you're, when you have a lot of money, it doesn't bother you. Someone can criticize you all day long, it doesn't bother you. But at the beginning, you're, you're, you're fragile like a porcupine. Okay, so realize what? Help people make a lot of money. That's the deal. How do you help them make a lot of money? Develop them into becoming a presenter. How do you develop them into becoming a presenter? Never criticize them. Only give them positive feedback, okay? Next thing is this, number seven. How do you do anything is how you do everything. How you do anything is guess what? How you do everything. How you do everything, okay? How you do anything is how you do everything. You've got to realize that you've got to become a champion. How do you become a champion is, guess what? Be a champion at everything you do. Whatever it is, it doesn't matter. If you're doing something, do your best. That's the deal. Whatever it is, it doesn't make a difference. If you're doing it, then guess what? Not because you need someone to say, hey, look, you know what? Good job, Trevor. The reason why you become the champion, the reason why you do your best is because of how it makes you feel. Yeah. That's the deal. How does it make you feel when you do your best? Me. Great. How does it? How do you feel when you do less than your best? Not great. Not so good. Yeah, you become unhappy. Don't be unhappy. Be what? Happy. Happy. What's better, happy or unhappy? Happy. Happy. How do you become happy? Doing a little bit more than you sh than you can. Then you're growing. <clears throat> how do you become unhappy? Doing a little less than you know that you could, and you get mad about yourself. Self unhappiness is the worst form of unhappiness. So don't become unhappy. Become what? Happy. happy. How do you become happy? By doing more than what you know you can. Stretching, growing, and changing. So how you do anything is how you do what? Everything. Everything doesn't make a difference. If you see me washing dishes, you'll be like, this guy is no joke. <laughs> no joke. No joke. You see me do dishes, you'll be like, this guy is a monster. You know what I mean? I got the cleanest dishes on the planet. <laughs> because that's how I do it. That's how I do it. If I'm taking the trash out, if you guys saw me taking out trash, you guys would be proud. <laughs> Seriously, some of you know, I can make a stack of trash like a mountain. You guys know they give you those little trash cans? You guys have no idea, man. If you guys saw my trash cans, you'd be like, dang, this guy's a champion. Why are we always throwing parties at my house nonstop? Like every other day there's a party at my house. 
So we always have, we always dominate trash in our neighborhood. <laughs> Some of you know, right? You've been over there, you're like, damn, yeah, I wonder why you have a big dumpster in front of your house, right? Well, what are big dumpsters, right? Like, order a dumpster, man. An extra 160 bucks, man, they'll come out and they'll drop off a dumpster for you. <laughs> it's like, you know what I mean? But guess what? If I don't have the dumpster, guess what I do? Build a trash tower. <laughs> and seriously, I teach my son, I teach my, my, my his cousin, my, my nephew was over the house, I'm like, I want you to watch and learn. <laughs> Someday you might be a called upon to be able to do this. <laughs> and I want you to be mentally prepared. And, I, and what I do is I, t- I, 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 I tie them together and I, and, I sh- and I go like this. So I tie the trash cans together, tie them together like this, like this, like this, it's like Lincoln Logs. <laughs> Ridiculous, man. It's like Jenga, though. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> what type of raccoon? All right, all right, all right. I can talk about my trash all night because you know why I'm passionate about it. You know what I'm passionate about? I'm passionate about everything I do. Seriously, man. W- watch this. You guys, sometime, you know what I mean? When you guys become, you know, some top producers here in, in, in the market, you guys, I want you to come to one of my son's football games. Yeah. I tell you, man, you'd be blown away. I, mean, I get these kids jacked out of their head. Like literally, like nothing you guys have ever seen in before in your life. You watch, man. You watch. It's ridiculous. We get, I get these kids jacked, man. My son's my my, my five year old starting football this year. I'm gonna be coaching the team. I get I get these kids just jacked sideways. And everybody knows, man. This guy, got, you got to get him on Tim's team. If Tim's coaching, you got to be on that team. Why? Because I changed those kids' lives forever. That's what I'm about. That's my that's my passion. Making people better than they were. That's the best thing to do. Watch how this works, man. This is awesome. The time will never be just right. So you got to do it today, okay? The time will never be just right, so start presenting when? Today. Nah. Today, man, don't wait. Sometimes people think, oh, I'm I, I, ready, aim, 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 aim. Ready, fire, aim. <laughs> do you see that? That's the way it is. Somebody's like, no, it's ready, aim, fire. That's the reason why you don't get it. Let me explain to you something, man. Go, go in your car and don't be fired up. Just sit there and start turning your wheel. <laughs> see how effective you are. <laughs> Do you guys see that? Just sit there and just turn your wheel, man. I'm getting ready to get ready. I'm getting ready to get ready. You can be the, you can be the meanest driver in the world, man. It's steward and steering turning wheel, man. You can like steer me and do all kinds of great stuff, but guess what? If you're, not in, if you're not in first, you're not going anywhere, right? Some of you right now, you're in reverse. Get out of reverse and get into first. Did you get that? Yes. Get out of reverse and guess what? Get into first. First gear is where the money's made, okay? You don't want to be the king, you want to be the king maker. You don't want to be the what? King, you want to be the king what? Maker. That's the deal. The best feeling you'll have is when you see other people do better than you. That's the best. Why do you want people to do that? Because it's amazing because guess what? You played a role in making that happen. There's not a better feeling than to be able to develop people that can do this business better than you. That's my passion. I get so fired up, because if I can't develop someone to do this business better than me, that means that I'm not very good at it. If I can get you to become better than me, then guess what? That means I'm good at training. But guess what? If I've got, you know what, the the old adage when we were little kids, we used to call it, um, right, follow the leader. Remember that? Your job was not to, your job was not to juke people. Remember? Right? That's not leadership, man. That's being a weirdo. <laughs> That's not, in the real world, man, what you want to do is you want to develop people that can do this business better than you. Everything that you do. Everything you do, you want to develop someone else to do it. Think about it, man. That's why I'm teaching my son how to do the trash. Do you guys see that? <laughs> right? I'm like, watch how this works. You can't participate yet. Just watch, okay? Week one, I'm going to do 100%. Week two, you can get involved, right? Yeah. Right. Week three, I'm gonna let you do a little bit more. Week four, I'm gonna watch you. Does that make sense? Developing other people how to do things great, but the only way you can teach greatness if you if you become great. So we're gonna teach you how to do this. So what does it look like? Stage number one, okay? It's opening. Stage number one is what? Okay. Opening. Usually I demonstrate something, but I don't know if I have any water. Does anybody have any water bottles here? Anybody have a water bottle? Yeah, an even an empty one will be even better. An empty one's better. You get that like that, that'll be good. You got one? Oh, do we have any empty water bottles or Coke bottles or any type of bottles? I've got it like 10 minutes. Is this good? Yeah, that's a good one. Is that one going? This is perfect. Watch how this works, okay? Hey, this, can, can I use some ears for a second? Now, here's the deal. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna use most of it because I know you're probably passionate about this water. <laughs> Mainly as motivated as this AC is. <laughs> it needs to pay attention, okay? So this thing's empty. Do you guys see that? 
You know, this thing's empty, right? Yeah. yeah. Hey, this, there's water in here. Okay? This, this, now think about this. Do you think, how many of you think I could, if, I could put this in here? Yeah. yeah. This I could put in here, yeah? Yeah. So watch. <laughs> what happened? It's not open. It's not open. Do you see it? It's like an umbrella. You first got to do what? Open it. Open it, then guess what you can do? You can pour it in there. And then guess what you can do? Drink it. <laughs> guess what you can do? You can drink it, you can pour it on your body. There's a lot of stuff you can do. <laughs> right? But if you, if, you, if you want to be able to, if you want to have it around later, guess what you got to do? Close if you want it around later, you've got to what? Close, Close it. Ooh. Most of you right now, you're just going out there trying to pour information on people. <laughs> That's it. Just pouring it all over, man. I don't know why they're not getting it. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta open up your prospects, okay? You gotta open up your prospects. Here's what you gotta do. You gotta open up your prospects, okay? Open up your prospects. Discover the hot buttons. Form. Ask, 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 ask. Okay, create a little pain. Get them ready for the close, okay? Then you present the information to them. Share, the pro share with your prospects a secret opportunity. Answer is a real can I do it, what's in it for me? Make the product a superstar. Make the product a what? Superstar. superstar. That's the deal. You've got to make the product a superstar. 100%, okay? Show them that the secret's the solution. Solution to their problems. Do you guys get that? You gotta find out what's, what the problem is when you open them up, find out what the hot button is, what do they need, and then guess what you do? Show them that we can I offer that. So if someone's got a band, if someone's bleeding, then they need a band-aid. So you gotta find out where, the, where they need to put the band-aid at. Then number three is close, have the application ready. Always ask for the close. Okay? Overcome the objection, receive the payment. This is right here, the one, two, three formula that you've got to do to become successful. Yes. You've got to get good at opening. That's more important than learning how to present. Mm -hmm. If you can open somebody up, then the presentation part is very simple. Mm -hmm. Some of you are like, well, you know, I brought four desks and they didn't get started. Well, how was your opening? If you get them open, then guess what? Then it's easy to share with them the information that it takes for them to be able to make a decision and get started. But if you share that information, it's just like pouring water on an empty and on, on a closed bottle. You've got to open them up, man. You've got to learn how to close them. You've got to learn how to present. These are the three things. But number one, if you're not good at opening, nothing else is going to happen. Opening is the easiest thing in the world to do. But guess what? You still got to do it. Just because it's easy doesn't mean it's not important. Does that make sense? That's the most important thing. Because most people will get started in your business because you do a proper job of forming them. Okay? So if you, if you miss some of that, just copy your name. Okay, here we go. We don't call copy here, though. We call what? Teamwork. Okay, good. Here it is. Okay. So the 11 steps to opening up a prospect. How many of you are ready to learn how to open up a prospect if you do say I? All right. All right. Here it is. Okay, we're going to do it. Number one, you, you understand the presenter must be properly edified. So you're bringing down your guests, you've got to make sure that the presenter's what? Properly. Properly edified. Doesn't make a difference who the presenter is. <laughs> you understand it's your ability to edify. Yeah. Do you get the presenter edified to the max, then guess what happens? Even if the presenter's no good, or they mean they're going to be like, if they're intimidated, they're like, oh my God, what edification is raising someone else's influence? Yeah. Saying something good about somebody. What happens is now you raise that influence, and then whenever they sit there and they meet them, they're, they're, you know, they're, they're a little bit nervous. They're a little bit, and then what happens is, guess what? They get started. Why? Because if mainly you're not good, they're going to go, wow, this person's not even that good. My brother-in-law, when we first got involved, I didn't have anybody, I didn't have anybody to, 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 to edify, so I said, edify him. I'm like letting them know, man, and they, they would get people being nervous to be my brother-in-law. Why? Because I did a good job of edifying I didn't say, hey, this guy works at Ralph's during the day and at nighttime he does his business. Do you guys get what I'm saying? Yeah. It's not like I lied to people and said that the guy was you know, a billionaire. I didn't lie to people, I just didn't mention that fact that he worked at Ralph's. Does that make sense? <laughs> I just want to know this guy's higher than this company because he's higher, he's higher than me. Does that make sense? Yeah. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so guess what? you might, you got to edify people. Use your upline, man. Use your upline. Use your support team, okay? Properly edify people. Number two, okay, believe 100% they're going to get started. Every time you sit down with someone and, get a, and introduce them to an opportunity, you have to believe that no matter what, that somebody's getting what? Sorry. Started. Right. You've got to have that faith and confidence. If you have that faith and confidence, people are going to want to do it. Mm. People want to get started because guess what? You have a belief system. You've got to know. Next thing is this. You have one chance to make a first impression. You have how many chances? One. one. So that's why people say, well, you know what? I, I, I don't like dressing in business attire. So you one you chance to make a first impression. Eye contact, smile, gentle touches, build trust in business attire. Gentle touches, build trust. So what do you do? Touch them. Now when I say touch them, I don't mean like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm just talking about some of these. Did you guys catch that one? Yeah. Just one of those. You just do this. And you build the trust. Do you guys get that? Now you don't have to jump on them. You guys get what I'm saying? If I jump on 
You know what I'm saying, Trevor? And I started, you know, right? You know what I mean? It's a little bit too much, right? Don't want to do that, okay? You just want to basically gentle touch, build trust, okay? Next thing is this, always sit next to your prospect. Always sit next to your what? Prospect. Every time you have a prospect, you want to sit what? Next, next to them. Okay, if someone's doing a presentation, and if I'm sitting down with someone at a Starbucks, or if I'm sitting somebody down in someone's living room, I'm not going to sit across the table from them, I'm going to sit right, what? Next, next to them. Okay, you want to make sure that you help, them, help you understand that you're on their side, okay? Am I breaking something? Here we go. <laughs> next thing, number five, okay, oh, it's a successful opening. People don't care what you know until they know how much you what? Care. care. People don't care what you know until they know how much you care. You've got to show people how much you care. How do you let people know how much you care? By showing them, man, going above and beyond. What do you do, man? You do everything that you possibly can. A brand new person gets started, guess what you do? Do everything you can to make it happen. Help them out more than they can even imagine. Make new people go like, wow, that's ridiculous. Right when a brand new person gets started, man, you want to do everything you can for them. At the beginning, until you get, guess what? Get them up and running. Right? Now, if somebody goes, well, what do you mean? Then you're a jerk to them? No. Doesn't mean you become mean to them, but you get them up and running. You, get, you pump them up and push them out. Does that make sense? Okay, you pump them up and push them out. You got to get your people out there running, doing the business. And if they're always hanging around there, you know what I'm saying? If they're always hanging around, guess what? You're upline all the time, then guess what? You're not going out there helping other people. So you get charged up by your upline, you get charged up, and then you go out there and guess what? Charge other people up. But ask yourself this question, am I a battery or am I a charger? I already know which one I am, the question is which one are you? You trying to go around getting pumped up? Pump me up, man, pump me up, pump me up, pump me up, pump me up. You're going out there, guess what, making other people feel better. Go out there and become, guess what? A charger, not a what? Yeah. Battery. They call them the San Diego what? Chargers. Chargers. Okay, that's the reason why. Because we charge, you just charge people, not the San Diego batteries. <laughs> it used to be rain, right? So four, you guys already know this, family occupation recreation money. Find out what's important to people. Ask them questions about their what? Family, right? About their occupation, about their, what they do for fun, right? Ask, 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 ask. So what is it? Family, occupation, recreation, and what? Money. Money, right? Ask them about that stuff. Next thing is this. Get them saying me too, not so what? Yes. Get them saying me too, not so what? What you want to be doing is, guess what? Saying what? Me too. Me too. What, do you like, what do you like to do for fun? I like to do that. And it, it, it's not like if someone's like, man, I like to do croquet. I'm not going to be like... Maybe me too, right? <laughs> I like croquet. Does that make sense? I always, I'm, I'm, what am I going to say, man? I got a lot of respect for croquet players, man. I don't even know how to do it. No one's ever took the time to teach me, man. I've always wanted to learn. Would you spend time with me showing me how to do it? I'd love to learn. Do <laughs> you guys get that? Yes. Someone's a doctor, I'm not going to hey, you know, it's funny that you're a doctor because me too. Does that make sense? <laughs> <laughs> what do I do, man? I'm going to tell them, look, man, I, 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 wow, you're a doctor. I mean, this is ridiculous. You're a doc, that's amazing. I've always <laughs> dreamt of being a doctor. It's unbelievable, man. Like, man, everywhere you go, you're no longer Mr. You're doctor. That's like sweet. <laughs> you're now you got a different title now. You just upgraded, you know what I mean? <laughs> man, how does it feel, right? I mean, everybody must look up to you, right? Everybody must want to be like you. So whatever it is, you understand what I'm saying? I'm not trying to go out there and one-up people. Do you understand what I'm showing you guys? Yeah. You know what a one-up person is? Somebody's like, man, I ran two miles this morning. Oh, you ran two, I ran three. Do you guys get that? You don't one up people, man. You one down them. Even if you went, ran, you know, at three miles, you guys will be like, whoa, two miles? That's intense, man. Running two miles is no joke. Do you guys get that? Yeah. You're making people feel what? Good. Good. Not smashing them down. You make them feel what? Good. Lift, 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 be a lifter, not a leaner. Did you guys get that? Be a lifter, not a what? Leaner. Okay? We don't need any leaners. We need lifters, okay? So guess what? Ask open door questions. What is an open door question? Open door questions are questions that people have to say yet more than just yes or no. If I could show you a way to make an extra 5000 a month, what would you do with it? That's an open door question. If you could take a trip anywhere in the world, where would you want to go? That's an open door question. If you had an extra, you know, if, 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 you, if, you had, if you could spend more time with your family members, what family would you like to spend more time with? Those are called open door what? Right. Questions. Those are questions that people have to answer something other than yes or no. Those are called closed door questions. Yes or no. Yeah. Okay? Now there are things called yes questions that are just, you know, you know, they're going to get the yeses for them. But you get what I'm saying? You got to, guess what? Ask open door what? 
Questions. Why? Because they're going to elicit more of a response. They're going to help people, paint people in the picture. You're going to understand what that means in a little bit. Be a great listener. Give spoken feedback, physical feedback. This is important. Very important. Watch. If you're talking to somebody, this is what the conversation should look like. <laughs> what I'm telling you right now, seriously, some of you are laughing, but I guarantee you right now, every woman in the room, the biggest challenge they have with, the, with their, 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 their man or whatever they call it, right, is that you don't listen. It's not you don't listen, it's that you don't acknowledge that you're listening. You just got to give a good spoken, it's what I'm telling you, man, I've been married forever. Does that make sense? You guys know how long I've been married? I got married when I was nine, what, 18? At 19 years old. Now I got married when I was 18, and I had my kid when I was 19. How did I remain married for that long? I'm good at showing my wife that I listen. All the guys know what you can be like, I can regurgitate everything you just said. It's not about doing that, it's about showing them that you're listening. Yes. <laughs> I'm just telling you, man. You can't mad dog somebody you're at dinner and like, <laughs> Let me share with you something. That's called spoke. That's called physical feedback. That's called what? Physical. physical. What spoken feedback? This is what. This is what it would sound like. Okay, everybody, close your eyes for a second. Everybody, in the cool people. Really? Oh no way. Seriously? Then what? No. That really happened to you? I knew it. That's what it sounds like. Do you guys get that? That's called what? Spoken. Spoken feedback means that guess what you're doing? You're just letting, you're basically you're encouraging them to talk more. It's what women want, guys. Just pay attention. Somebody's like, no, they don't. They want men to know how to play video games. That's not what women want. Just so you know, I'm not, I'm not one, okay? But I've been lucky enough to be married for a long time. Okay? And what I've discovered is the fact that women are going around being like, man, my boyfriend could crush your boyfriend in Halo. <laughs> <laughs> Wait till Madden comes out. My boyfriend wants to smash your boyfriend. That's not what girls are talking about. Just in case you guys are curious. Does that make sense? You know what I mean? My boyfriend's a level 70 troll. We're going to Warcraft. <laughs> Just letting you know, gang, okay? some of you guys are like, no, man, but you don't even understand. My thumbs are ridiculous, dude. I feel like some ridiculous thumbs. Okay? No, that, the women are jacked, they're jacked back your thumbs, okay, bro? You know what I mean? Unless it's good at counting money, you know what I mean? Right? Seriously, right? I'm people like, not me, I don't care about my man's bro. You know what I mean? She better change that. You don't be like that. My wife would not tolerate me being broke. Seriously, my wife would not tolerate it. She motivated me. Go get off your. Do you guys get what I'm saying? She smashed me, man. Brown house kick to the face is motivation. Okay? I don't ever even think about that. I'm mean, making a lot of money. You know what I mean? You gotta, you gotta understand. You gotta remember your body does not lie. So be confident. If you're like this, no, I'm really, really, I'm really, I'm really thinking this thing's gonna work. Do you guys get that? You gotta lean forward, man. If I'm doing a one-on-one -on -one presentation with someone, if I'm sitting here with someone in their living room at a spa party, wherever I'm talking to somebody, guess what I'm doing? I'm always leaning forward. It's called having a forward-leaning motion. Are you trying to retract, uh, attract or repel people? Attract. You're trying to attract people or repel people? Attract. If you're trying to attract them, then guess what you gotta do? You gotta be attractive. Does that make sense? Have forward-leaning motion. That's it, man. Have a forward-leaning motion about you. Have confidence and certainty. Confidence and certainty is a demeanor. Just so you guys all know. Enthusiasm is, guess what? The way that you hold life's possibilities, it shows up in your demeanor. Do you guys want to know what the best, the, 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 the best, uh, you know, the best plastic surgery you can have? It's called enthusiasm. Yeah. <laughs> you understand? Just get excited, get enthusiastic, and guess what someone says? You look good, right? Why? Because you're enthusiastic, you're passionate, man. Passion. Get excited about your life. And guess what you do? Let it show up in your demeanor. You've got to have a belief system. Believe that you're going to win. Have that belief system to attract people. That's how people get attracted to you. So always lean forward, right? Be confident, okay? Whoops, goodness gracious, I got to carry away. Here's what it is. Always be prepared. What does that mean? Have the documents. Always. Have, if you, if, most people, they, they do the laminates. Most people do laminates. They'll grab like one of these, and I'll pass these out later. But you get one of these, and they'll laminate them. That's a good idea, too, right? If you're going to do laminates, 
right? It, it, it have your stuff laminated. Why? Because guess what? It makes people, even if it's an application, someone goes, well, you can't fill an application if it's laminated. Yeah, but guess what happens? When someone sees it, they're going, wow, that's important. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Then you break one out, they can fill out. But laminate everything. That's what I do. Everything I have is laminated. Why? Because people are like, whoa, it's massive edification, okay? So always be prepared. Have documents, have your laminates, have your brochures, have your product. Always have your what? Product. <coughs> Never leave home without your product. Always have your product. Okay? That's magic, okay? You guys already know the three keys of presenting. The first one is what? Okay. Open. Second one is what? Present. Second, third one is what? Close. Okay. We just talked about opening. How to open somebody up. Okay, everybody knows how to open people up now. Are you guys with me on this? Yeah. Yes. Going through this fast, I need you to get, 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 uh, pay, pay, pay attention, okay? So first thing I'm gonna do, when I sit down with someone, is do what? Change their listing. Follow me on this. I want you to, I want you to change your listening. How do I change their listening? Here's what I do. I'm going to say something to you. I'm going to say, look, I'm going to give you enough information for you to make an educated decision to see if we can change your family's financial future. You taking up your time and me taking up my time when I'm all through, give me a simple yes or give me a simple no because you know what I know, maybe you're thinking about tonight, so I say no. And I don't say it that fast because that sounds like a weirdo. I just want you guys to understand something that that I memorized in 1996. Why? Because I could not close a window. I couldn't close, I couldn't close a garage door. I was the worst closer on the planet. And I couldn't close anything, man. And this one guy was a beast closer. He was like the best closer on the planet. And I asked him, I said, Nick, I asked him, I said, what's the secret, man? Why are you so good at it? I go, everybody that walks in the in walks out and they're in. You sign up 100 percent of the people. Because it's not about it's not hundred. I don't sign everybody up. It goes about 98%. <laughs> I'm like, dude, you're a beast. I don't sign anybody up, man. I just introduce it to him. He goes, then you're wasting your time. Learn how to close. I go, how do I do that? He goes, what you do is you change your listening. And I'm like, what? He says, what you do is let them know they're going to have to make a decision when it's all done. So then guess what? No one will ever say maybe you're thinking about it. You remove that on the front end so you never get it on the back end. <laughs> so every time I sit down with someone, every time I, every time I do a presentation, every time I talk to about anything, I'm always removing the objections before. If I'm doing a small bar, I'm going to tell them too. Same thing, right? Even if it, No matter what, you're going to be at least become a customer. Right, when we're all through here today, tell me, you, you, you know, guess what, I like it, I guess what, I want some of these products, I want to become, I want to be a part of it too, or guess what, I don't. But don't tell me, Nate, you're thinking about it, because that's just a nice way of saying no. Now guess what I do? I, now, from now on, they're listening with different ears. Now they're paying close attention. Why? Because they know they have to make a what? Decision. decision. But if you know you have to make a decision at the, at the, at the, at the, at the end, guess what you're going to do? You're going to listen to Ring. Today, right now, guess what? If I tell you that, guess what? You're going to get, you're doing this exact same training tomorrow. You're going to listen with a different set of ears. The people that need this the most are getting it the least, and the people that need it the least are getting it the most. Joe doesn't even need to listen to this, but I guarantee he's going to walk out of here with more knowledge than any of you guys. Why? Because he doesn't need it. People that need it the least get it the most. And you guys that have been in for two years and never done a presentation, guess what? You need it the most. But guess what you're going to do? You're going to sit there and debate everything that I'm telling you. Huh. <laughs> But if you watch what I do, I do exactly this every time, okay? Get, bam, it's right there, okay? At the, at, oh, man, that's good. Baby, yeah, that's it. Here it is, okay? This, this is the magic. This is not stuff I came up with, man. This is what my mentor taught me. My mentor taught this to me when I first got involved in this. I was blessed to have some of the greatest mentors ever. And the guys that trained me on how to do this business were like the legends that started this business like in like a long time ago. Like I'm talking like, you know, a long time ago, okay? This is how you do it. They told me, they said, Tim, the first part of understanding, it, the first part of influencing somebody is understanding them. Did you guys catch that? Mm -hmm. We say it again, okay? This is the 12 percent steps how you can become an effective presenter. Understanding is the first part of influencing. I can influence somebody all day long if I can guess what? Understand them. But if I don't understand them, I can't influence them. I gotta know where someone is so I can, at first, so if I can find out where you are, then I can go over there, I can go, go there, okay, and then I can take you over here. But I can't get you to come over here, but I can go there first. Right. What you want to realize in this business, you want to become, guess what? A tour guide, not a travel agent. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> True leadership are tour guide leaders, not travel agent leaders. I'm not going to tell you, hey, you know what, go out there, man. Let's go out there and bust our, you know what, and then you're like, where's Tim at? Can't find that guy. You know, man, guess what? I live my message. I bet I can introduce you to some of the greatest trainers in network marketing. Some guys that are unbelievable, but guess what? They don't live their message. 
They don't, they, you've got to live your message. You've got to live your message because that's how you have integrity. Integrity is a clear correspondence between your words and your deeds. You've got to live your life with integrity. So how do you do that? You understand where someone's at. If I can understand where you are, then I can take you where you need to go. But if I can't find you, then guess what? I can't, I can't take you where you need to go. So where are they? You try to listen to them. Listen to where they are. That's why you ask questions. Find out where they are. And then guess what? Once you understand them, then you can influence them, okay? Number two, then you identify with them. Identification, just so you guys all know, is everything in this business. Your ability to identify with someone, that's the most important thing. How come every time I start a presentation off, I say the same thing? Because <clears throat> I identify with everybody. When I say in your seat for the first time, I was a little bit negative, a little bit skeptical, a little bit doubtful, but at the same time, I was hopeful. Done. Everybody goes, that's me. You have to identify with people, man. You've got to get people saying, oh, that's where I'm at. If you can't identify with them, guess what? You're not going to be able to take them somewhere. You have to understand where they are, and once you understand it, then you've got to identify with them. If you can't identify with them, then guess what you do? You use someone else's story to identify with them. Nice. Someone's like, I'm a doctor. I'm not going to go, hey, man, I was a doctor, too. I mean, no, exactly. I'm not going to identify like that. You understand? I just say, look, you know what? One of the guys I work with is a doctor. Let me tell you about doctor, you know? Boom, I'm sort of talking about, you know, Dr. Ho is crushing in L.A. tonight. You know what I mean? This guy's a beast, right? He's up in L.A. making it happen. The guy's a professor of dermatology at UCLA. These are the reasons why he was attracted to the company. Bam, 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 bam. You guys see that? So I'm going to identify with him by using someone else's story. If I don't have a story that can match. If someone's like, man, I'm so fired up. I can't wait to find out what this is about. I can't say, oh, that was how I was. You guys get it? Because I wasn't excited. I was negative at the beginning. I was like, lotion. When I started oh, about secret, I'm like, the only thing I know about skincare is lipstick tastes good. <laughs> that's what I told Aiden, man. Aiden called me up about it. I'm like, look, man, I, I like the way lipstick tastes, but that's about it, bro. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> I don't know. Aiden, he goes, dude, it's not, co he goes, it's not cosmetics, you idiot. It's, it's skincare. I'm like, what is skincare? He's like, do you use soap? I'm like, on certain parts of my body. <laughs> he goes, you're so gross, bro. <laughs> He goes, skin care. He goes, everyone's got skin. It's the largest organ in their body. Most people are made up of at least seven pounds of skin. I'm like, dang, dude, you know a lot about skin, bro. <laughs> you right? And then he showed me, and I was like, this is a no-brainer. Anybody can do this. You'd have to be, you, any, anyone can do this. Anybody can do this, man. This doesn't make a difference. Why? Because the products do, the, do all the work. When the products do the heavy lifting, you can become successful. So I'm some guys in the break, they're in a company, they sell air. And look, when you sell air, that's hard. If I'm like, hey, what do I get whenever someone gets started? I would get $499. What do you get for $499? An opportunity, right? A chance. It's like, dude, what? It doesn't make any sense. That's hard. Why? Because you're giving no value. That's hard to do. Selling a product that works, that instantly works, that's easy to do. But guess what? You've got to guess what? Have the product show up. Let them do the heavy lifting for you, okay? Identification, we already know, is everything. Open them up to something new. Open them up to something new. Before I do a presentation, you guys have seen me do a presentation one million times, what do I do? I do the 100 college graduates, I'll do the boss, you know what I mean? I'll do the, I'll do, I, there's a lot of different stuff I can do, but I do that to open up their mind because what they're doing right now, all you try to do is put a mirror up to someone and let them know what they're doing is not working. How do you do that? You can do it with your story, you can do it with your testimonial. Testimonial is the easy way to do it, man. That we were, let me tell you where I was at when I first got involved in this business. You tell your testimonial, you get mastered telling your testimonial. You'll track people like wildfire, man. Why? Because guess what? People can relate. Here's what you need to learn how to do. Show pain. Why? Because everyone can identify with pain. Everyone can identify with pain. Whatever it is, if you, if, if, and most people, are too, uh, most people are too insecure to talk about what's, what, 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 what's painful for them. So when you have to say, look, this is where I was at, right? I was sick and tired of this, I was sick and tired of that, I was scared about this, I was scared about that. People are like, whoa, right? And I did, people identify with pain, okay? Open them up to something different, okay? Next thing is this decision making is 20% logic, 80% emotion. And that's something like, no, no, not me, I'm 100%. Okay, well, you must have never kissed someone before. <laughs> Just so you know, right? When you kiss somebody, there's nothing logical about that. And you guys know your mouth's not like one of the cleanest parts on your body. You guys do know that, right? Yeah. <laughs> right? So guess what? Why would you kiss someone? Emotion. Because it just feels right. Do you guys do that? <laughs> right? It tastes right, though. You know what I mean? Right? You know? <laughs> <laughs> that ain't right. <laughs> that ain't right. That is not right. But guess what? It feels right, so guess what you do? Right? I don't know what you do, but here's what I do. Here's what I'm telling you guys. It's a lot, it's, it's, it's not logical. 
All right? If, if you drove here in a car, that's not logical. That's emotional. You guys know the people die in car automobile accidents? A, a horse. That's more logical, right? <laughs> you guys get what I'm saying? Right? No, no, seriously, man. All you guys gotta realize is guess what? Logic is, is, is what people base their decision on, but emotion is what moves them. Emotion is what moves people. So how do you move them with emotion? We we'll talked about it tonight. So here we go. Let's go into this stuff. All right, here we go. Get your prospect in the answer mode. Oh, this is Obama, how he got elected president. Yes, he can. You know what I mean? You're saying to yourself right now, I want to vote for this guy, right? I mean, the, the guy was a mad magician, right? Like, literally, he was ridiculous. But literally, he was a magician. Get your prospects in the answer mode. Get people saying what? Yes. If you get people saying yes, then guess what's going to happen? They're going to be open. Not even about this, you got to understand, not even just about this business. Every time I talk to people, all the time, I'm always getting them in the answer mode. Always. Yeah. Why? This is a no-brainer, man. You see me coach little five-year-olds, guess what you'll see me doing? Yeah. Getting in the answer mode. I get them to participate. Why? So I know that they're learning. I go, wait, we're going to go, you know, this, this right here, this is a stance. What is this? And everybody has to repeat, right? It's a stance. It's a what? It's a stance. You guys are great at doing stance. You get them involved. Once you get them involved, they guess what? They understand it better. So guess what you do? When you ask questions, you get people what? Involved. You see that? Yeah. You guys with me on that? Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. You guys follow me? You guys see that? That's called getting people on the what? Yes. yes mode. Okay? Here's what we do, you guys. Remove all objections throughout presentation. Why do we do presentations? To remove objections. Do you guys catch that? Yes. You guys with me on this? Yes. Why do we do presentations to remove what? Yes. Objections. Yes. The whole reason why you do a presentation is, guess what? To remove objections. Why? Because people have got reasons why they're where they are. And then before someone can get started, they've got to get what? They've got to understand it, man. Think. If I'm showing somebody the plans, I'm sitting down with them, what are their objections? All I got to do is, guess what? Overcome them throughout the presentation. How do I do that? I'm going to show you guys in a second. It's called the believability gap. But you're not ready for it yet because I want to spend a little bit more time on this, okay? What you do is you do a good job of removing the present throughout the presentation. So you're right now, whatever objection you hear, someone's like, everybody always says the same thing to me. Because you're not good at removing that throughout the presentation. Once you master getting rid of that throughout the presentation, then guess what happens? You're not going to hear it in the, in, in when you go into close. So you remove, why do we do presentations? Remove. To remove objections. That's why you do a presentation. <laughs> if not, you would just have them, people just line up and, and we, there would be a window. Do you get that? People have objections, so you have to eliminate the objection. How do you do that? <laughs> Present the information to them. But you're not explaining it to them. You're not sharing it with them. You're guess what you're doing. You're, you, you understand? You're, you're, you're giving them enough information, right, to get started. But guess what you got to do? You got to understand what are the things that are what are the stumbling blocks? What stops people from getting involved in this business? Let me tell you right now, it's none of those. It's somebody not doing a good job, an adequate job of presenting. <laughs> Think, man. You see, down with someone, guess what you do. There's no reason not to get involved in secret. It makes too much sense. Dang, man, look at our deal. It's ridiculous. Look at the products. It's out of control. They work, man. They're instantly. We're not talking about 30-day challenge, 90-day challenge, six-year challenge, five-year challenge. We're talking about what? 30-second challenge. <laughs> challenge you not to get excited about this. You know what I mean? Seriously, I don't have to sell you the products. Every other company in the industry has to sell products. We don't sell products. I show products and the products sell themselves. Yes. I'm telling you right now, that's what happens. Yep. What do I mean? I don't have to sell you. You're going to sell yourself once I show you. <laughs> you're going to go, wow, my fingernail is shinier. You guys get that? <laughs> my skin is great. This is wild, right? Oh my God, my wrinkles are gone. You're going to say that. Yeah. So I don't have to sell you on that's going to happen. All I have to do is show you that it's going to happen. And you're going to sell yourself. No one's got products like we do in the industry. That's why we destroy everybody, man. Anybody can make money here. Anybody can make money, man. Anyone can sell these products. Anybody can. And that's important. Why? Because most companies, people can't sell the products. So what do some companies do? They get rid of the products. They just sell air. <laughs> what do I get for $4.99? Right? What do I get for that? Why is it $4.99? Oh, because $500 is illegal? OK, do you guys get what I'm saying? <laughs> it's like, come on, man. Can't sell air for more than 500, right? I mean, it's like, what? 
You understand what we've got, you guys, we've got products that have already sold $600 million retail, come on now, by people that don't speak English. <laughs> Game over. <laughs> no brain, man. So how do you paint them in the picture? Okay, number seven, paint them in the picture. How do you do that? W-I-I-F-M. What's in it for me? What's in it for me? Okay, what does that mean? Okay, you gotta find out what's important to them and then you put them in the picture. How do you do that? I get you to visualize doing it. So when I'm doing a presentation, I say, who are two people that you know that want to make more money? I say, who's the best looking girl that you know and the most popular guy that you know? Why do I say that? Get them to stimulate some thought process. Instead of you introducing the two people introduce the two. If I'm getting you to think about people that you know, and I get you to visualize people getting started, guess what happens? Think, man, you're, you're already visualizing yourself doing it. Once you get someone to visualize doing it, then guess what's gonna happen? They're gonna wanna what? Do it. So when you're painting them, paint them into the picture. What would you do the next for 5,000 a month? Would you get a brand new car? Would you get a brand new house? Would you buy your boss? That's painting someone in the picture. You've gotta learn how to present, man. How do you do it? You study good presenters. You study good presenters. It's not hard, man. You get around Joe Valenzuela and you study this guy. You get around Jesse McPherson, you study this guy. You get around Zach Jenny, you study this guy. You get around Brad, you get around AJ, you get around the leaders and you follow what they're doing. Why? Because they are making it happen. Okay? So it's no brainer, man. Paint, paint people the picture. Always use voice inflection. Always use voice inflection. Voice inflection changes the meaning of a sentence. So I'll give an example. If I say to you, um, if I use the sentence, he did not beat his wife. Watch this. He did not beat his wife. That means somebody else did. If I say he did not beat his wife, that means he just smacked around a little bit. If I say he did not beat his wife, it was his sister he beat up. Do you guys get that? I changed the meaning of the sentence by changing the, the part that I inflect and, and my, my, my voice inflection. So you have to use voice inflection, guess what? Change the sentence. change the meaning of the sentence. Do you guys see that? Are you guys with me on this? Yeah. yeah. I hope you guys are with, with me on this, because I know some of you right now are just getting too excited. Good presentation of number one, educate. Number two, entertain. Number three, inspire. Educate, entertain, inspire. Are you guys with me? What's number one? Educate. Educate, number two is what? Entertain. entertain number three is what? Inspire. inspire. Okay, so this stuff I'm going to teach you guys, okay? Here's how it works. Make fun of yourself. Why do you make fun of yourself? Because if you don't, someone else will. Yeah. You guys get that? If you make fun of yourself, then the prospect's not going to make fun of you. <laughs> That's the deal. But if you sit there and try to act like you're so cool and you're so much better than them, then guess what they're going to do? They're going to make fun of you. So you remove that from them. How do you do that? You make fun of yourself, then they don't. Very easy to do. Next thing is this. Give commercials for the next event. We're going to talk more about this in the regional, but here's what you guys got to realize. You've got to learn how to give commercials for the next event. The regional training that's coming up on the 21st, I'm going to teach more in depth on how to do this. But you got to be there on the 23rd first to be able to take advantage of this. But you always want to give commercials for the next what? Event. Did you guys see that? Yeah. I just did it. Yeah. Every time I do a presentation, I'm always promoting the next event. I'm giving commercials, man. You guys ever seen a 30-minute TV show? What do they have? Commercials. Commercials. They have commercials all the time. time. Why? Because that's the whole reason why they do it. You got to give what? Commercials, man. On the 21st, we're going to go into this more detail. Do you guys get that? Yeah. I can't wait for the 21st. I look, I'm looking forward to the 21st. Why? Because on the 21st, we're going to do this more. That's called giving a what? Commercial. Commercial. Okay? Uh, what are you branding? I mean, you got to be brand. Who, most people brand? You know what most people brand? They brand, uh, or like, 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 uh, like, 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 uh. Do you guys get that? <laughs> Not good branding, okay? People don't care what you have done, they care where you're going. Yeah. People don't care what you did yesterday, they care about where you're going tomorrow. Yeah. So when you're out there, don't talk about what you did five years ago. Don't talk about what you did 10 years ago. Talk about what you're gonna do this week. Talk about what you're gonna do next month. Talk about what you're gonna do this year. So many people, they live life through the rearview mirror. All they talk about is what they did you know, five years ago. Don't look through the rearview mirror, you're gonna get in a car accident. Look through the, you know what I'm saying? Look through the front. Look at the future, man. Focus on the what? Future. Not the past. Some people beat themselves up in the past, man. You learn from the past, but you don't focus on it. Focus on the future, okay? So people don't care where you go. This is the believability gap. If you guys are ready to learn this, say I. I don't have a lot of time to train on, so you guys gotta pay attention, okay? Here's how it works. Identify a technique, confess logical reason, call to action. This is gonna blow your mind if you're not ready for it. Give me an objection you've heard before. Not no time. Not interested, no time. What is it? No money. 
Whatever it is, okay? Look, watch. I do, I do the, I can go through all these excuses all day long. I make sure when I look at this information for the first time, I'm saying to myself, you know what, I don't want to do this. You know what I mean? Then I realized I was broke. I'm thinking to myself, what I'm doing right now, I don't want to do. Then I thought about it, look, you know what, if you pay me $20,000 a week, I'll ride with my feet. So I got started right away. Do you guys get it, Wow. You just identify, take and confess, logic and reason, call to action. Just bam, 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 bam. <laughs> What's another one? I don't have time. What was the other one? Money. Money, right? Now, when I first got involved, when I first saw this business for the first time, I was fired up. I liked it. I'm like, man, I want to do this. I'm not going to say this on the front. I'm going to say this when it comes to that time where I'm talking about the money. I'm going to say, look, you know, when I saw this for the first time, I was excited about it. Then they showed me that I had to make a financial commitment to get a package. I'm like, whoa. Whoa. I don't have any money. I'm broke. And I thought about, well, if I'm broke right now, what I'm doing is obviously not working. Do you guys get that? Mm -hmm. And I realized now I'm going to get $1,300 in the product for $5.99. I said, even if I sold it at half price, not that I would ever encourage people to do that, but even if I sold it at half price, I was going to make a little jump on commitment. Mm -hmm. I, I, I need to get started. So I got started right away. Do you guys get that? So I found a way to get the money. What are other streets you have before? It, you don't really hear that one because it's a secret, but you guys got to realize something. You're going to have people like, oh, I tried network marketing before and it didn't work. You guys get, so when I first saw this for the first time, and me personally, I got involved in network marketing first time I was 16 years old. I was a new skin, okay? I was a new skin selling with Formanix, okay? I was taking the vitamins. But I was involved in network marketing back when I was 16 years old, you know what I mean? So I, 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 when I saw this for the first time, when I saw this industry for, you know, in 1996, I already tried this business before, so I was a little bit negative, a little bit skeptical. You guys get what I'm saying? But I realized that guess what? What I was doing wasn't working. What I was, I, 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 and you give them enough logic right there. You gotta just touch on it. That's all it was for me. What I was doing wasn't working. We're gonna boom, we're gonna go for it, sign up. Said to myself, you know what? Even if I have a 1% chance, 1% is better than zero. Mm -hmm. I know a 0% chance of boomers, even if I have a 1% chance here, I'll take 1% over zero every single day of the week, so I got started right away. Mm. Whatever it is, it doesn't matter. It's the same thing, man. All they are is excuses. Everybody wants to get in, everybody wants to get rich, everybody wants more freedom, everybody wants more time, everybody wants to help out the family, everybody wants to do something special, everybody wants to do something great. That's the deal. So whatever it is, it doesn't matter. No excuse, is it? it doesn't make any sense. So whenever you hear an excuse, get rid of it. Whatever excuse, get rid of it, man. Why? Because they're nothing but excuses. Don't allow it. So when you hear an excuse, you remove it in your, in your presentation. Now, if you're working in a group that has a lot of those excuses, how do you, Trevor? So when you're, you're, when you're 20 years old, you're working with the 20-year-olds, guess what's probably going to happen? Excuses. A lot of excuses about the money. Why? Because as soon as they get money, they go party. Does that make sense? <laughs> so guess what you said? They just tell your story, man. When I got involved in this business, I was broke. I was 17. I didn't have any money. I just tell my story. Identify with them, attack the problem, confess you had it, give them enough logic, right, that makes sense, and then call to action. It is all day long. But it doesn't come naturally. But once you've done this for about, like I have for 16 years, it comes pretty natural. Do you see that? It's too easy, man. It's like, it's a no-brainer, man. People have got excuses. Your job is to eliminate them. How do you eliminate them? First, you got to find out what the excuses are. How do you do it? You go out there and present, you hear this excuse, and do a better job of eliminating. Guys, this is a no brand. It's called the Closing the Believe in the Middle of the Gap. I'm going to show you real quickly. You guys are going to about this open, close train, right? We got that. Okay. Open, present, close. There it is. I'm going to touch on closing and we're going to wrap up. We're going to miss some, we get some of this stuff. We're going to have to wait for the regional. We'll have to recap on it. But here's the 12 proven steps on, on how to become more of an effective closer. You guys got to really pay attention because I'm going to fly through this fast, okay? Number one, confidence, urgency, fear of loss. You got to have what? Confidence, man. You've got to expect everybody to get in. I don't sit down with anybody expecting them to do anything other than get started. Everybody's getting in on this, man. No one's not. Everybody's doing it, okay? That's my attitude. Now, are there people that say no to me? Probably. But if I do, then guess what I do? I flush them. What do I do? Forget about it, man. Delete that file. I don't sit there and guess what? Like yesterday's clouds were in the day sunshine. Some of you have someone say no and it'll paralyze you. <laughs> Guys, don't get paralyzed by vitamins. No's are your vitamins, man. No's are vitamins for your business. So it makes you stronger. But guess what? Don't hang on to them. Delete them. I don't hang on to no's. Some of you guys like yesterday's clouds were in today's sunshine. Get excited, have confidence, have urgency, and then guess what? Fear of loss. People are more motivated by fear of loss than hope of gain. So what do you do? I talk about dislocating your hip. That's what I do. I fear lost people. Why? Because guess what? The biggest challenge we're going to have is they look back and say, man, I could have, should have, would have. 
Man, I should have done this. Shit in this, you know, and again, I have the flat forehead syndrome. So guess what I do, man? I use a lot, of, I spend a lot of time on fear of loss. Why? Because that's the deal. You gotta understand that, okay? Have the application ready. Always have the app what? Ready. ready okay? Always expect a special agent package. Always expect a what? Special, special agent. agent, man. Always expect people to want to get started with special agent. Why? Because it sets them up for success. Yes, they're gonna get the products they need to become successful. Do you want them to succeed? Yes. Yes. They're gonna they're gonna make a commitment, a financial commitment. Do you want people to win? Yes. 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 The more financial commitment they make, the more serious they're gonna take it. Yes. Someone gets started, they put their tippy toe in the water. They're not gonna be serious. You gotta get people to get committed. How are you gonna get committed? Get a special agent. More special agents become successful anywhere else. Number three reason why? Because they make more what? Money. Money, money man. You help someone in the first 12 weeks make 15% of the 10. Do you want people to make more money? Yes or yes? yes. yes. Guys, it's a no-brainer then, okay? That's where you help people out. Did you see a way to whatever the hot button is on, at, during the forum? So right when it's over, did you see a way to make some serious money? Ask a closing question and learn how to shut up. Mm -hmm. Right when the presentation is over, shouldn't take you more than three minutes to have the application filled out. Why? Do you guys know why? Because I've already removed all the objections in the presentation. Joe's already removed all the objections in the presentation. Yep. Zach's already done it. So all, by the time it gets to close, if you start talking, all you're going to do is let them know that you don't have any confidence. Yep. That's all it is. After the presentation's over, you start blah, 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 means I don't have any confidence. <laughs> and I'm scared to ask you to get started. Yeah. Right when it's over, man, let's get your application knocked out. We can start making some serious money. Who's going to go to come on your checks? Your name or mine. Boom. Why do I, I'm going to tell you something. You, it's not about pressuring somebody in. If someone says, no, I don't care. But I'm not going to sit there and have them not want to do it because I'm too weak. I'd rather scare somebody away by being too strong than scare somebody away by being too weak. Yeah. You're like, um, so do you want to do this? <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, did man? So I looked at you. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, have a backbone. How much are backbones? <laughs> you already have one. Okay, so just use it, all right? Here it is. Okay. <laughs> Seriously, it doesn't cost you more to use it. You've already got it. You might as well put it to use. Okay. Use the cushion. So, someone, get, if I'm closing and, and, and I'm getting the, I'm getting application, but I always expect people to get started. Fill out the application. You go wait a second. Well, I, I need to think about this. Oh, perfect. Always perfect, man. I'm glad you said that. I like people to think about what they do. One of the keys to becoming successful is actually thinking. When the good news is, guess what? Let's think together. Because the good news is, when you think and you don't know the answers, guess what's going to happen? You're not going to know what to think about. So what are some of the things right now that are slowing you up from getting started? Do you think about the industry? Does this make sense? People have skin, don't they? What about the company? The company's got done over $600 million in sales retail. Now we're going network marketing. First moves advantage, couple with a backbone. Kind of a no-brainer when you look at the company. What about the comp plan? Most aggressive pay out in the industry, confident makes sense. Let me ask you this question. What about the training and support? Well, we have the best training and support. Probably don't know anything about that. I guess the only thing that's left is you. But it's not about you, it's about you and me. And I, when, the good news is I'm good at what I do. And guess what? I'm going to help you be good too. So there really isn't anything to think about, is there? Welcome to the team. So what do you mean trust with you? You guys know what I'm saying? It's called holding your ground, man. Hold your ground. If not, then guess what's going to happen to them? 40 years from now, they're going to be where they're at right now. Five years from now, they're going to be where they're at right now. 10 years from now, they're going to be where they're at right now. You're saving people, man. You're saving them. If you went to someone's house or house on fire, what do you do? Uh, excuse me, uh, but like, uh, you might want to get out of here. Do you guys get what I'm saying? <laughs> You're like, your house on fire, man. Get out of here. Well, I really need to think about it. Think about it. <laughs> think about your house burning down. What you need to think about is how to get outside. Does that make sense? <laughs> Right? So you just gotta, you gotta have a backbone, man, okay? Persistence where it's not resistance. Seven no's equals a yes. When they say no, that means ask me again. No is guess what? Not right now. No, yeah, no means ask me again. <laughs> <laughs> what do they say no to? Someone's like, no, I don't wanna do it. What do you, what do you not wanna do? You don't want, you, want, you, you don't wanna make more money? Or you don't wanna have more free time? Which, which ones don't you wanna do? I'm just curious. <laughs> Well, I, I just I just don't know. You don't know about what? You know about having more money, you don't have more money, or time. Yes. I'm just kind of busy. Yeah, that's how I was, right? I was busy, just like you. But you're not doing it like that, you're using a cushion all the time. So you never you never come at them strong. You don't argue with people. 
You, you watch me close, you'll be like, this guy is very good. Because I don't act like I'm closing strong. So I hold my ground and I have the demeanor that I'm having right now with you guys, but guess what? I don't act, I'm, I'm, oh my God, I'm glad you said that. So you're right now, you're not interested. But it's funny that you say that because that's it's kind of how I was when I first saw this too. Then I started thinking about it, I was like, hmm, what am I not interested in? Make more money or more free time? And I thought about it, I was like, you know what? I could use both, I might as well do it. <laughs> do you want to have more free time? Just curious. I want to make more money. You see how it is going to do that, can't you? Let me help you fill the application out, man. Let's get you rolling. I'll be out. Boom. Welcome to the team. Only reason why people do not get started is because they don't think that you're going to the top. Mm. If they know you're going to the top, and guess what's going to happen? They're getting in, okay? So guess what? If, you, if they're still sitting there, they want in. Did you catch that one? Yeah. Very valuable. So don't oh, that never be the first one to stand up. If I'm sitting there, and they're sitting there, guess what that tells me? Their mouth might be saying no, but their body's saying yes. They're sitting there. That means they want in. <laughs> How do you know when to stop? When you, when you, somebody goes, well, somebody knows. That's kind of pushy, Tim. Their mouth's saying no, but if they're still sitting there, their body's saying what? Yes. yes. So guess what I do? I keep on keeping on until they, guess what? Wise it up. So you just keep on. If you care about people, you're going to stay in there longer. You're not going to accept excuses, man. When I sit down with someone all the time, always I expect them to get started. Why? Because this is it, man. My belief system is higher. My belief system is out of control. I'm, I'm in love with this company. I'm in love with the vision. I, I'm in love with what's happening. So my passion is too strong. So when I sit down with someone, I'm not going to let them miss out. Think, man. I'm not letting people miss out on this. How do you do it? You've got to believe, man. You've got to have a belief system. Okay? So number last thing is just fill out the application form. Always fill out the application form. Why? Because you want to show people that you care, yes or no? Yes. Remember what we said earlier, people don't care much about something, how much you what? Yeah. Care, so guess how you show them how you care? Fill the app out for them. Fill the app out for them, okay? And we're going to wrap up with this, you guys. I'm gonna, we're going to miss out on some of this information, okay? But people will be afraid not to join you if they know that you know where you're going. One more time. People will be afraid not to join you if they know that you know where you're going. you got to let people know that you know where you're going. How do you do that? Know where you're going. You have all the stuff I talked about earlier, man. It's a mindset. If you know no matter what, you're going to get rich with this opportunity. You know no matter what, you're going to become wealthy. You know no matter what, you're going to make it happen. And guess what? what? Guess what you're going to do, man? You're going to get people in. Okay? So guess what you got to do? People will be afraid not to join you if they know that you know where you're going. Some people close to live, other people live to close. What does that mean? Some people, they close people because they need to make a living. Okay? So guess what they're doing? They're grinding it out, man. Why? Because they got to make money. See, other people, they live the clothes. Meaning what? Meaning that every day they get excited to go out there and help people get started in this business. Why? Because they know they're changing people's lives. See, it's easy to close someone if you know that you're going to help them. Some of you right now are terrible at closing. The reason why is because you don't know that you're going to become wealthy with this. Hmm. Once you have that belief system where you know no matter what you're going to make it happen, over, under, through, you're going to get to the top, then guess what? You don't want people to miss out. You've got to raise your belief system. You've got to know that no matter what, man, that's the deal. That's the thing. How do you attract people to this business? You've got to have belief. You've got to know. You've got to be on fire with this opportunity, man. And have that belief system. People are like, man, I want to be part of this. People are going to be excited about your belief system. The products are going to open them up. The products are going to break the ice. You're going to want them. You're going to that. Well, compliments really good. But guess what? They're going to buy into They're going to buy into your belief. People don't say no to secret. They say no to your belief system. You understand what does that mean? That means you've got to raise your belief system to the point where people cannot say no. When people can see that you're going to become wealthy, they're going to be afraid not to get started in your business. So if I do a one-on-one -on -one for someone, then guess what? Their friends are going to know they're going to become wealthy. If I do a spa party for somebody, guess what their friends are going to know? They're going to become wealthy. They're going to be like, wow, why this person lucked out. <laughs> they're not you. <laughs> That's the attitude, the mindset you've got to have. You've got to let people know that, guess what, you're going to become wealthy. People are going to be attracted to you like a magnet on steroids, okay? And then here's the thing, Ethan. Go back for a second. If, if you don't get people started, you've got to leave them happy. Did you guys all catch that? Yes. That's the more important than anything else. You cannot leave people not happy. The most important thing is this. Right when the presentation is done, then guess what? Somebody gets started. They don't get started, they at least let them go, man, hey, I went down a secret. I met that guy Joe. I met that guy Zach. That guy, Brad, those guys are cool, man. Those guys are cool. I'm, I'm really glad I met them. It wasn't for me. I didn't get started, but I really like those guys. That's what you want. 
Not, man, I went down there and I wanted to do it, but man, that guy Joe, man, jeez, that guy, you know what I mean? You don't want that. <laughs> well, you guys don't have that because Joe's too good. But you guys got to realize you don't want to make people get mad. You want them to leave excited. That's what you guys have done an amazing job out here in San Diego's creative community, creative family. You know that everybody's got your back in this room. Everybody that's sitting in this room, you know that no matter what, over, under, through, that guess what? No one's going to get left behind. You know that in this marketplace. You guys have done an amazing job. Probably one of the best, if, if you're not the number one market, one of the best markets in the entire country. You guys have done that. You guys have built that spirit of community and family where people know that no matter what, we're in this together. That you know that someone's fighting alongside with you. That you're going to win together. So you've got to have that attitude. Don't even realize is this. You've got to make a decision tonight. You've got to make a decision right now. You've got to make a decision right now that you're going to the top. You've got to make a decision right now that you're going to change your life. You've got to make a decision right now that this is it. You've got to be saying to yourself right now, this is it. This is my time. This is my chance to make it happen. This is my time to be a part of something special. This is my part, time to be a part of something great. I'm not going to let this window of opportunity pass me by. I'm not going to let this moment of time pass me by. I'm going to take advantage of this window of opportunity. I'm not going to let it slip through my fingertips. And I'm going to lock arms with you guys. And I'm going to be a part of this team here. And I'm going to play a major role and help it out any way that I can. And I'm going to come out of here, I'm going to lock arms with you guys, and I'm going to build this market. I'm going to step up right now and I'm make this the most dominant market in the company. Yes. You guys are going to realize this is it. Yeah. Time to step up, you guys. It's time to go.